Hi again, this is Matthias, the creator of Stitch Buddy, and you're watching the last video of a series addressing a new feature of Stitch Buddy 3.0, which is adding shapes to a design. And in this lesson, I will cover some advanced topics, which is uh, filling complex paths, um, how to add an underlay. Um, there's an option, borderline backstitch, I would like to um, explain to you. And last but not least, custom, uh, custom tatami fills. So let's start with filling complex passes. And therefore I'd like to um, enter a new design here. Um, as you remember in our last session, we were working on a, on a flower um, shape. It just uses um, the blossoms of this flower to explain what this is about. Um, if you're filling these shapes here, um, it might look Okay, after adding the stitches like we did in our last lesson, and let me just zoom in a little bit. Um, but actually, um, if you are looking into at jump stitches here, or let's uh, let's do that first. Look at the jump stitches. Um, you see a lot of jumps back and forth between these two blossoms. Blossoms, and um, if I'm using the stitch simulator here, um, and look like this design is stitched. It's not what you would expect, correct? So um, there's a lot of movement back and forth. Um, this happens because if I'm looking into my um, options, adding these shades, shapes, um, I have a stitch direction here of 45 degrees. And when these two shapes are filled, um, there are a lot of overlapping designs in the direction of 45 degrees. So um, just to give you an idea what I mean is if I draw a line here, for example, um, in, in, in this direction, it's not actually 45 degrees, but you get the idea. Um, there's uh, at least the, the first blossom is crossed uh, two times there, then the third one, the second blossom, and, and these stitches, filling uh, my shapes, moving back and forwards, they will just jump a lot here. So to avoid this, there's two things you might consider. One is, of course, adding only one shape per time. Um, so let's just um, undo what I just did. Um, again, add shapes, and, and now I'm removing one of these. And if I'm now adding this shape, I can in Stitch Body um, select the stitches here, just copy, paste. Uh, sorry, that was print. Copy and paste these stitches and move them around. Just just like drag and drop, and maybe rotate them a little bit, and and say I don't have these lot jump stitches back and forth. So that's one, one thing I could do. And of course, if I'm adjusting this, the filling direction, filling stitch direction, I could even eliminate some of the jump stitches within one shape. So if if you have similar shapes added to a design or multiple ones, um, just have a, have a look how they are located, uh, what your stitch direction is, and maybe it's a better idea to add one shape after the other instead of composing one complex path and adding all it at once. So that's the first thing I'd like to cover here. Now going to underlays. Um, again, let me just open my new design. And for the sake of this lesson, I'm just using a very simple shape here, a rectangle there. And if that's generated, uh, if there are, uh, that's filled with stitches. Um, it might lose a little bit of its structure on your fabric. Um, so often for larger filling areas or even for large zigzag stitches, it is highly recommended to add an underlay there. So let's just first generate some stitches here. And in, in, an underlay is basically a structure of stitches which lays be below your actual shape there and they're running across the filling direction. So what I could do is I just use again the add shape functionality here. Um, 
without a fill, but only going with single run stitches. I'm deleting the shape I had and go into the single um, drawing mode here. And now just manually, I just add um, some filling shapes here. Oh, that was, that was the wrong direction. Sorry for that. So let's undo by right clicking, starting here at a different location. And now I'm going just across, mostly across the filling area I just filled. And you can see it's, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome to add these underlay, but for complex paths, it's, it's, it's something you need to do manually anyway. Um, so you get the idea. Um, I'm just hanging this here at the moment. And then I'm just adding the single run stitches. And I have a kind of an underlay here, which is now stitched above my uh, shape. So I'm just drag and dropping it into the first um, position. And if I would like to have no color change here between the filling and the underlay, I can even here uh, skip the color change. So it's combined there and then um, going to the stitch simulator, you can see that first the underlay is stitched and then the filling comes across. So of course that was only partial, partially filled there. You need to do it for the whole shape. So that's underlays. Um, and once again, let me just delete all, delete all stitches here in my design and covering the third option which is border outlines. Um, again, adding a shape, um, some rectangle. And if I fill it with some tatami fill, I don't stitch an outline here and generate stitches. You can see that at the, at the edge of this shape, um, the last stitch actually is omitted. Um, just zoom in a little bit. That's done to avoid very short stitches at the at the corner at the edges of your shape. Um, that's okay if you have a dense filling. <clears throat> Sorry, if you have a very loose filling, it might result in a in an uneven an edge here. So if you want to have each forward and backward filling stitch exactly on the edge of your shape. There's an option in the filling dialog for that. So um, again, let me just undo what I just did. <clears throat> I have this backstitch borderline option here. And if that's activated, every forward and backward filling line will end and start exactly at the edge. So it's, it's a more um, harmonized edge here. Um, Nevertheless, you will get a lot of very short stitches, as you can see here, at the edge of the shape. And this might become too dense and even cause needle breaks. So it really is dependent on your, the kind of filling you're applying, if it's a loose or if it's a dense one. You should definitely be careful with this option. And of course, as any design, please make a test run before, before stitching it in your project. And last but not least, um, maybe one of the most complex topics here um, is um, custom tatami fill. So again, going into the edge shape dialog here. And that's a fill type. And if, if you're looking into uh, at um, tatami fills, and let's use the standard one first with an angle of zero degrees, then it's basically that each line will have a penetration point one fourth um, forward compared to the, its previous line. So after four stitches, the penetration point is exactly at the same location. That's one, why it is called one fourth tatami fill, which is a very regular pattern afterwards but I can customize that. And if I'm use the other option, Tatami Custom, 
I can enter something which is called offset sequence here. And this offset sequence are, are up to eight digits. Um, ju just imagine each stitch in the filling um, is um, divided by eight. And you can define for up to eight lines when it should start. So if I'm entering in zero, the stitch is directly starting at the fill line. If I'm entering it two, for example, it will um, start one third of the stitch length, four and a six, for example. If I'm doing this, I have four stitch lines, each starting one um, fourth of the, uh, of the stitch length. And that's actually what this uh, custom tatami fill is. And um, if I'm entering, for example, O and 4, I will have two different stitch lines. Um, the second one will start exactly at the half. It's 4, so 4 eighths of a, of a stitch um, of the previous one. So if I generate these stitches, I have a stitch line, second one at the half, the third one is again at, at my starting position, uh, the fourth one again at the half. I can double this as well, for, just for example, by 0044. Now I have two lines at the beginning, then two lines in the middle, again, two lines at the beginning, and so on. There are various options you can um, enter these um, offset sequences for tatami. Um, it's it's a quite complex topic. Um, I don't know if all of you will really require that. Um, if you're more interested in how this works and what can be defined there, I, I recommend to search the web. Um, just Google tatami and offset sequence. Um, they will find various articles from different software vendors. Um, Nevertheless, it's 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 not required to use it. Normally, with a, with a regular um, filling, you're fine just using the predefined one here. Um, so these were advanced topics to be covered for the add shape functionality, which is new with Stitch Buddy 3.0. As you might have noticed, this is a very new feature. Um, it's part of a free update for every um, customer, and I really. Would appreciate your feedback what what is working well what doesn't work as you expected um hurdles um of, of course positive feedback as well i will further work on this feature i will extend it for sure um that's the very first step here and just keep in mind it's it's not a full-fledged digitizing tool like you might have from other software vendors here it's just used to um, add some simple shapes to your design um, maybe add some knockdown stitches a, a small image or something like that um, that's what it should be used for and as mentioned i appreciate your feedback and please leave a rating in the app store if you like stitch buddy and contact me at info at stitchbuddy.de if you need further assistance thanks a lot have a good day and bye